We're gonna go through how to create a community in 2024. We're gonna go through the five questions you need to ask yourself, three different communities that are crushing it and lessons you can learn from them, and three different tech tools that you can use to create your own community. Let's go through the five questions you need to ask yourself. And that starts with, what is your goal? If you're creating a community, you need to think about, are you serving a community that you're passionate about? Are you just looking for a community in the market that you think you can make a lot of money from? You need to be crystal clear on what your goal is to make sure that you can set a finish line and goals along the way. So first of all, on a piece of paper, write this down or put it in the chat down below. What is your goal? Number two, and I think people don't ask themselves enough, what skill do you currently have? This is huge because a lot of times people want to create communities. They have no idea what it's about, or they're trying to think about, well, I'm going to showcase this kind of skill and you just don't have it. Now you can have a community where you're learning and people are along the ride. In fact, this channel, we had our most successful live stream called build with me. It was me learning all these new products and everything like that. But you have to be really honest with your audience and you have to make sure that they know upfront that they're along for the journey versus you're an expert and they should listen to you. So it really depends on what your skill level is, what are you currently doing and how does that play into your community? What will you do? The third part is who is your competition? Now, this is also to really think about what product or service are currently out on the market or wh who's your competitors? What's going on here? So if you're going to create a community for creators, you need to know what other, what, other, what other communities are out there. This is important because you need to find out what makes you different. Just because there's communities out there doing the same thing, that's fine. I mean, think about how many fast food restaurants there are. There's Burger King, McDonald's, Wendy's, da 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 the same thing with communities or whatever you're trying to build. Competition is a good thing. It can allow you to differentiate yourself or maybe you can show what everyone else is doing and why you're pivoting or when they're zigging, you're zagging. You have to decide on what you're going to be doing, what makes you different. And then the last part is, what are you selling? Now, this is important because it's not just I'm selling a community that has you know other experts in it that's a good part and that allows you to have the features and concrete, but what are you selling them? Are you selling them a dream? Are you selling them the idea that they can get a profitable job or something like that? What are you selling to your community? And if you need help with a lot of these different ideas or where you should look, we have the 50 plus high profit side hustles down below. You can get it for free. And you can see all the different things people are selling that can be communities that you can give away in your community. It goes on and on. And the last part, actually, we'll talk about after we go through the three different communities that are crushing it right now. Here are the three communities that are doing a great job. Chief of Staff Network, 100 Days of No Code, and Hampton. Now, if you're not familiar with a few of them, we're just going to go over them briefly. But Chief of Staff Network, it's more of a professional community. It's allowing you to level up as a Chief of Staff, and they're highly curated. You cannot join unless you're currently a Chief of Staff. So that allows it to be prestigious. That allows you to really focus on who your main um, your main members are, and then it allows people to segment if they're ready for this or they're just not ready and they can join another community before they join chief of staff network 100 days of no code is a series of days where you learn how to use no code but also it allows you to have opportunities with boot camps throughout the year and really just allows you to try it as a hobby or try something new in your life and then Hampton is really focused. This is join the private network for high growth founders. Hampton is a highly vetted membership community for entrepreneurs, founders, and CEOs. If you're looking at this, and the reason we're going through different examples would be there are tons of different types of communities that you can build depending on what you're trying to do. It can be professional. It can be as a hobby level. It can just be a support group. 
write down what you like and what you don't like about some of these uh, communities. See what you would use. Would you use the same language? Do you like the landing page? All of those things that will help you kind of get a good idea of what a community could look like for you. Now, we went through the f five different things you need to ask yourself, the three different communities to get ideas. Let's look at three tech tools that you can use to build your community. Here are the three Use Screen, Heartbeat, and group app. Now, as you look at these three, we've done videos and there'll be links somewhere above my head or down below where you're gonna be able to see all of the different ways you can use these platforms. But what's important to note is all of these platforms have pros and cons. They have very specific features that could help you with a type of business that you're running for your community. So it's important to write down before you just sign up with all these free trials, write down what do you need for your community right now? Do you already have a community or a group of people and you're going to be migrating them onto a platform? Say, for instance, are they all in Slack and then you're bringing them over here? Are they in WhatsApp? You know, think about that. The other thing is, what kind of features do you need for your community? If you look under the product section of Uscreen, you see what it's good for, what the different features you can use it for, including I've talked about this in multiple videos, but the marketing toolkit, I just think it's it's one of the best out there when it's giving you all of the different tools you can use to make sure that you do decrease the amount of people that you lose. So decreasing churn, you can have many different ways to upsell and downsell. The subscription tools are just great in the tool set right there with you screen for a heartbeat. One of the best things that I think like bar none with heartbeat would be how they allow you to onboard and have custom uh, custom onboarding based on your community. Uh, the founders of heartbeat, they're wonderful and they used to be, um, community operations managers and community managers in general. So they understand the ins and outs of trying to run a, a community and all the different intricacies of the onboarding. That's what really stands out with, with Heartbeat for sure. And Group App, I really think this is like the on rails edition of the other two that I mentioned. It doesn't have as many frills, but I think it is very concise for the experience you can create. And it's, it's a great option. Now, depending on what you're looking for, let me know in the comment section down below. Are you a fitness entrepreneur and you're trying to use Uscreen? In fact, we have different videos and showing how different uh, fitness in influencers have done this, such as Be Tribal Fit. There's a, there's a whole interview um, with the team. If you have wanted to know about Heartbeat and some of the things about that, we have videos on that. And then Group App, we've mentioned them in quite a few videos as well. This will allow you to know what you need to do for 2024. First, think about where you're at, write down goals, what you need to do. And after you do the, the five things, make sure you go out and pre-sell it. Even before you even pick a platform to have your community, I encourage you to see and test the waters. Are people even willing to pay for your community? A lot of times people go through this whole process. They build everything. They're focused on building their community and they have not even tested does anyone even care about this? And will anyone pay? Without that, that asking those hard questions will allow you to sharpen your skills, sharpen your focus on maybe you need to present your community in a different way to give more value. Maybe it's not a community that you need to make yet and you need to pivot. But focusing on revenue allows you to have a profitable community business versus trying to think about, well, I'm just going to increase by having ton, tens of thousands of free customers, and then I'm going to going to you know monetize the top 1%, and that's how I'm going to make my millions. It's just not going to work that way. If you look at some of the best, um, including Hampton, what they're doing is when they're vetting, when they're already putting the pricing out in front before people can even join, they've done all these things. That's just one reason why they're successful. And some of the best profitable and healthy communities, they understand that they have to have revenue in order to build a great community, to hire the right people, to make sure that the ecosystem is, is intact. You have to think about those things. So 
in the comment section down below, you'll have a link to this if you want to grab all of these questions to answer yourself, or if you want to get the high profit side hustles right now. We'll see you in the next video.